Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Chemistry of Cars. I am Charlotte Roadcap, the resident chemist here at TFL, and today we are going to be talking about a fan favorite, which is octane ratings. Today we're going to be asking the big question of is lower octane fuel bad for your car? And to do that, you know, we're gonna get started with two myths that surround octane. It is not a measure of the quality of fuel, and it is also not a measure of how much octane molecules are in your fuel. All it is, is a measure of how compressible the fuel is With octanes being a standard measure of a fuel's susceptibility to detonation under compression, we have to explain why this is bad for your engine. And that has to do with pre-ignition and knock. First, we have to go over what exactly is normal combustion. Well, it's pretty easy. Right on the compression stroke, as the piston comes up in your cylinder, um, between 40 degrees and 10 degrees, right before top dead center, the spark plug is gonna fire and ignite the fuel-air mixture that's inside the cylinder. Then, as pressure builds, as the combustion goes on, a little bit right after top dead center, pressure should reach its maximum, and then the cylinder will continue downwards on its power stroke to provide torque. So what happens when your engine knocks is pretty interesting. So you have your main flame front here that was created by the spark plug as it should have been. However, when an unburned part of the air fuel mix in here is subjected to heat and pressure, it may detonate. So if you have little flames going on, say over here and over here, Local shock waves are created around these two little fellows. Now that may cause the pressure in the cylinder to rise above its design limits and cause engine damage. If it is knocking moderately, then it could create a little bit of particle wear that can go through and cause some damage before it goes through your oil filter. However, if the damage is severe, you can get holes in your pistons or even the heads of your cylinders. Pretty nuts. Ignition is something that's definitely different from NOx, and that's something that people get a little bit confused about. So pre-ignition is on the compression stroke as the piston travels upwards in the cylinder. The heat and the pressure from compression causes detonation right before the spark plug fires. ways that the world rates the octane rating of a fuel. So number one is the research octane number. So fuel is run through a test engine, which runs at approximately 600 RPMs at varying compression ratios. And that performance and, you know, resistance to knock is compared to a couple different mixtures of isooctane and m-heptane run through the same engines at the same speed, at the same compression ratios and compared. The second way that an octane rating is obtained is by the motor octane number. Now this is a very similar test to the RON rating, however it is run at about 900 RPMs with variable ignition timing and also a preheated air fuel mix to get closer to actual running conditions of the car. And usually this is about 8 to 12 numbers lower than the RON. In the USA and varying other countries around North America, you are going to see at the pump the anti-knock index. That is what 87 is, 85, 91, etc. That is the number that you see when you fill up your car. This is the average of the RON and the MON. And if you're wondering, say, why you go to Europe and octane ratings are a lot higher than that, it's actually because they report the RON instead of this average of the RON and the MON. If 
you have been to Colorado or any sort of state along the Rocky Mountains, you've noticed probably that the lowest octane that we have way up here is 85, where it is on the coasts, the lowest octane rating that you find at a gas station would be 87. Why is that? If you were in Denver, Denver is a mile above sea level, and if you were to compare the atmospheric pressure of sea level, which is about 14.7 pounds per square inch, to the atmospheric pressure of Denver, which is about 12 pounds per square inch, you would see that we actually have a whole lot less air up here. So what you can do is figure out you know, what your compression would be at altitude by this handy dandy little table. So say your car makes 170 pounds PSI at sea level. You do a compression test, that's what you find. Well, say you're going to Denver, you wanna figure out how much compression it's gonna make there. You're going to multiply 170 by 0 0.86, and you're gonna find out that it would probably make about 146.2 pounds per square inch at altitude if it was a naturally aspirated car. That's very important to note. That means that you're gonna have about 28% less air in the atmosphere all around you. And when your naturally aspirated car is sucking all that air into your cylinder, you're gonna have a whole lot less air in your cylinder too. So that's why we can get away with a lower octane rating at altitude because we don't have as much air in our cylinders during compression to begin with. So that way you don't really have to worry about the air fuel mix detonating. And we still haven't answered the main question, which is lower octane fuel bad for your car. It really depends on your type of engine. If you have an engine that uses forced induction, meaning supercharged or turbocharged, you have a lot higher of a compression ratio than say a naturally aspirated engine. So you are absolutely not going to wanna to put lower octane fuel in that. You wanna look at your owner's manual and make sure that you are using the rating that your manufacturer recommends. As far as naturally aspirated engines go, you're probably going to be just fine riding 87 or 85, depending on where you're at in the country. Of course, you should check your manual and make sure that you're gonna be okay. However, because they run at a lot lower pressures than a forced induction engine, you're probably gonna be all right. In conclusion, we really need to say that Octane ratings are only an indication of a fuel's resistance to knock. They do not indicate the quality of the gasoline that you're putting in your car. You really need to be checking about what kind of additives are in the fuel and how the fuel was made to really get a sense of how good it is. All right guys, well thank you so very much for watching. I really love making these chemistry car videos. Again, if you guys have any questions about chemistry and cars, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. So I hope you guys have an absolutely wonderful day and me and my little also octane molecule, hope to see you soon.